We're here today at St John's College at the University of Sydney for the General Sir John Monash 2023 Global Symposium. Let's go and meet some scholars. Hello, I'm Paul Ramage. I'm the Chief Executive of the General Sir John Monash Foundation. And with me today is the 2022 BHB John Monash Scholar, Isabel Hansen. Isabel, I'd like to start by covering some basics. In which part of Australia did you grow up and what were your early years like? Were you always interested in education? Yes, I uh, grew up in, on the Camaragga lands of Sydney, so the Lower North Shore. Um, and uh, I was always a very passionate and enthusiastic and curious child. I had the huge privilege of growing up around the Australian bush, so um, down near the sort of uh, lower North Shore parklands. And my fascinations as a young child were um, the natural world, so the ocean and being sort of picturing myself as a bit of an explorer, and drama and the musical arts. But as a went into high school that changed and I became more interested in systems that represented people and how we interact with the natural world, so economics and chemistry. How wonderful. And then you went on to become a John Monash Scholar. Mm. Where did you study? What did you study? Uh, I've had the huge privilege of studying at the University of Oxford. Uh, there was one professor in particular I wanted to study with, Professor Trish Greenhog, because she's a general practitioner, a public health physician, and someone who has been able to uh, make radical system change to improve health equity uh, across the world. Uh, it's been a huge privilege studying with her and I've uh, just finished the Masters of Translational Health Sciences. The Translational Health Sciences Masters is about taking the innovations that we know work from the evidence and applying them into real complex systems. There's been a real lack in previous research around what we do once we know what works. There's an assumption that if it's a good idea, it will be taken up. But unfortunately, that's not the way the world works. There's often many complex uh, in interplays between existing system structures, um, what people are ready to receive, uh, what resources are available. And so I've spent the last 12 months studying with her and some other exceptional uh, doctors and innovators from around the world about how to take ev evidence-based practice and make it happen. How wonderful. And you may have partly answered this, but what's one thing, one experience that will always stay with you from that study overseas? Oh, um, it, it's such a privilege to study at Oxford. And I, and I think that one experience that really sticks in my mind is sitting in the Bodleian Library in the, the Duke Humphreys area. And there's something magical about the centuries and centuries of knowledge that has been created there and the, the generations of people who've gone through with, I'm, I'm sure many of the same aspirations as me to be of service and to make the system a little bit better for everyone in their country and to sit in those seats that they've sat in and to think well and deeply has been an enormous privilege and will stay with me for the rest of my life. Gosh, I can feel that, that is amazing. <laughs> um, and, and perhaps in a related way, what is the most surprising thing about undertaking the scholarship that in hindsight you wish you had known from the outset? I, I'm very grateful to have seen how wonderful the Australian health system is. Having the opportunity to go and study all the different health systems from the world, you have a unique vantage point when you're not in Australia of looking back on what we do and what we do well. We do so many things well in Australia from worker protection to health equity. There are many areas for improvement, but it's a huge privilege to be in Australia and we're starting from such a strong foundation. It, it really gave me the impetus to come back and to protect the excellent health system we already have and to continue working to make it better. Wonderful. So you mentioned before the masters and professors who you worked with. If we could just turn a little bit more now to exactly what you're doing, uh, how would you describe your current role and responsibilities? Uh, so currently I, I wear two hats. My main hat is that I'm a DPhil student now at the University of Oxford. I'm doing my PhD focusing on youth mental health, which is a passion of mine. I'm also a GP and I have the privilege of working with the remote Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities where I see a, a lot of what happens when youth mental health doesn't go right and the movements of the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander community with social and emotional well-being is inspiring and we have much to learn from there. So my current project is I'm working on youth mental health hubs, 
Headspace here in Australia, which uh, for those who may not have heard of it, is a, um, a, a walk-in centre where no referral is required for um, young people aged 13 to 25. It is world's best practice. So the rest of the world is looking to Australia to learn from what we've done and what Origin and Patrick McGorry have done and to apply it in their countries. I'm part of that knowledge translation effort in the UK where they're wanting to learn from what we've done well and apply it in their systems. So my research is a strengths-based inquiry. It's called appreciative inquiry to see why does this work so well and how can we harness those factors and apply them in different contexts and with different populations. Isabel, that's remarkable. Um, the world's looking at Australia, but I'm sure in part they're looking at you with your wonderful skills as well. We, we do live in a world of constant change, driven in part by disruptive technologies. What's changing in your field and what can we expect to see over, say, the next 12 to 18 months? Mm. It's a very exciting time in healthcare, but not one without risk. Uh, the, after the COVID pandemic, the radical change that we saw around the way that digital communication technologies are used in healthcare has been both a, a huge blessing. It removed a lot of red tape and meant that a lot of people got access to care, particularly in rural and remote areas who wouldn't otherwise have had access, but it also enhances the digital divide. So people who don't have access to that technology, to good internet, to video, and are being left out of a system that's being rapidly rolled out. Connected to that is the introduction of AI. I mean, it's been the year of ChatGTP in 2023. And we're asking deeper questions around what is the role of a doctor? Is it just to deliver information or is it to offer a healing partnership with our patients? We know from the therapeutic literature that over 50% of the healing relationship comes just from the relationship with another person. So I think as we move over the next 12 to 18 months to even next, next decade, the question will be, what can a computer do better than us? And what's our role as people in, in being part of the healing profession? Isabel, you're a remarkable young Australian, a remarkable John Monash scholar, and it's such an honour to talk to you today. I wonder on a lighter note to end, if you could tell us about what you're reading, what you're listening to, and what you're watching. Perhaps a couple of books, a podcast, or something on a screen. Yeah, um, currently I'm reading another book by Ursula Le Guin, The Left Hand of Darkness, although her book, The Dispossessed, is my favourite. I really like um, sci-fi or sort of dysutopian fiction from people who are deeply thinking about society. Ursula Le Guin was quoted as saying, nothing I write is imagined, it's all me reflecting society back at you through mm. a different lens. And I think thinking about what more equitable health systems and a broader social system would look like, it's very interesting to explore through different fictional lenses. So that's the current book on my nightstand. Uh, in terms of podcasts, there's two that I routinely visit. Uh, for anyone who likes science, there's a great podcast called Ologies. Uh, it's a very fun, playful uh, science podcast where they interview experts. I think the tagline is um, how to ask smart people not so smart questions. But it's very joyful and entertaining and you always come away learning something about a new field. And I'm a big fan of the Financial Times podcast. I listen to it every day. I think that they do an excellent review of current affairs and the financial markets and uh, give a sort of snapshot of a daily insight into what's happening across the world, which I find really useful, particularly at Oxford, where I have a breadth of opportunity to interact in different projects to make sure I'm up to date on what's happening in the world. Isabel Hansen, 2022 BHB John Monash Scholar. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me.